So nihilism is the belief that all values and all religion, everything spiritual has no value whatsoever. It's just baseless, nihilism. Basically, life beyond is just meaningless. When I think about this term nihilism and I think about that belief, in, in some sense, I think it's translated in a way that basically says, you know what, life's a you-know-what, and then you die. So you might as well live it up because there's nothing more. That's what nihilism is trying to say. We're here, we do some stuff, we die, game over. As simple as that. I mean, that's at the heart of what nihilism is. That's at the heart of what we see, I think, a lot of people in our society, you know, follow. And I think sometimes the way we see that our society going is it pushes us a little further away. I can remember in the seminary, in my seminary days, you know, we used to, you know, get together to discuss life. We used to discuss the meaning of life. And I remember one time asking this question. I says, how can you be confident how can you be confident that there is a God? And I'll never forget one of the professors there, one of my, my, my uh, uh, you know, good, my, Becky was my spiritual director. He said, look, I have to believe it because if I'm right, I get everlasting life. If I'm wrong, I take a dirt nap. So what have I got to lose? That was kind of his approach to counterattack that other belief. I don't know if you've ever heard of Alexander Papadaris. Alexander Papadaris was born uh, during World War II on the island of Crete. And he lived in a very small village, a very poor village. But Alexander, you know, grew up there. And that particular island and those particular small villages you know, were attacked by Nazi paratroopers. And to some extent, they were just completely wiped out. And many of those people were then put into concentration camps. Alexander, as a boy, was one of them. But in seeing everything that took place with some of the battles and so forth, he grew up into his adult life saying to himself, I have to find the meaning of life. I have to find my purpose. And what he did is he pursued God. You know, he studied theology and the orthodox religion. But he set out to say that, that I'm going to do something that's going to make an impact in other people's lives. And in that village, you know, he actually started a peace institute. That peace institute is still going strong today. Basically, what he wanted to do is he wanted to share how do you live a life of peace? Because at the heart of him discovering the meaning of life and his purpose in life was to share peace with others. You know, one of the gatherings, you know, somebody had asked him a question as he was sharing, you know, a talk on peace. And basically, the question to him was, you know, what's the meaning of life? What is the meaning of life? And he thought to himself, and as he was kind of, you know, talking about it, he said, you know, when I was a little kid, after, you know, some of these battles, and after the Nazis were conquered and they left the island, I was walking around on the island, and I found the rubble of a motorcycle, a motorcycle that was driven, you know, by a Nazi paratrooper or a Nazi soldier. And there on the ground, he found some broken, a broken mirror from the motorcycle, and he said, what I tried to do as a little kid is I tried to piece it all together, but I realized that I couldn't get it all together. So I decided to just grab one small piece, and I took a rock, and I actually rubbed the edges of it, and it became kind of like a toy for me. Because I was kind of fascinated by the fact that I could take this little piece of glass and I could reflect light. I could reflect light into dark places. And I played with this all the time as I was kind of looking for something to do. And he said to the people there in that talk, he said, this became a symbol for me. 
This became a metaphor for me, for my life. He said, I am a fragment of a mirror whose whole design and shape I do not know. Nevertheless, with what I have, with what I have, I can reflect light into the dark places of this world, into the black places in the hearts of others, and change some things in some people. Perhaps others may see and do likewise. To me, this is what I'm about. To me, this is the meaning of life, my life, to reflect back peace, to reflect back goodness, and ultimately to reflect back what Christ has led me to in my encountering the risen Christ. All right, share all these kind of thoughts with you today because I really in some thing, in sense think, you know, as I reflected upon this story about Zacchaeus this week, that there is a story about the meaning of life here. The meaning and purpose of what we're supposed to do. Now, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. You heard that. We've heard that before. He was a chief tax collector, so that means he was wealthy. He had lots. He truly had a lot of things in his life. And I'm sure at one point some of these things become, became his main focus. Maybe that became his purpose. Maybe that became his meaning in life, is to take on all the possessions I can, to become as rich as I can. He wasn't well-liked either, because in those days, tax collectors were cheats. Tax collectors took advantage of people. They were friends of the other side, not the side that Zacchaeus came from. So he was not well liked. But then here we have this story where Jesus comes through his town, the town of Jericho. And of course, Zacchaeus had heard about him. He knew that there was something special about this man. And of course, he wanted to see him, but there were obstacles. There were obstacles in his way. Number one, there was a big crowd. Number two, he was short in stature. But he wanted to see him. So what did he do? He ran ahead. He climbed a tree so he could see Jesus. He did all that he could to see Jesus because he knew that there was something there that could really have an impact in his life amidst everything that he was doing that might have been wrong or was wrong. And of course, then Jesus stops there at that tree. And he looks at him and he just says, Zacchaeus, this is pretty, pretty imposing, isn't it? He says, hey, I'm going to come stay at your house tonight. You better go fix me a meal. Zacchaeus knew at that moment that life was going to change for him because he opened his eyes to Jesus. He didn't let the obstacles get in the way. He didn't let the things get in the way. He opened his eyes to Jesus. And of course, he ran home. He got it all ready, prepared a great meal, I'm sure served some good wine and welcomed Jesus into his home. I love this line that towards the end of the gospel where Jesus actually looks and he says, salvation has come to this house today. Salvation has come to this house today. It's a beautiful story that really tells us, you know what? We have challenges. We have obstacles. We have things that do get in our way but you know what? When we focus on him, he's going to welcome us into his kingdom, and he's going to say, look, I'm going to show you the meaning of life. I'm going to give you the purpose of life if you just invite me into your house. It's just an incredible story about saving, about taking us away from those things and pointing us in the right direction. You know what, Brittany and Michael? Today's a beautiful day. It's a day that you welcome this beautiful, or you bring this, this child to be welcomed into this church to be a part of God's family. But I'm going to tell you, as I like to always say, there's no magic wand that gives way, that's being waved today. You know, this is about you saying yes, that we're going to show Marilyn Christine God. We're going to show Marilyn Christine Jesus. We're going to show her about her faith. 
you know what? You are her greatest examples of life. She's going to look to the two of you first. And so I always like to say it's a time that today maybe you need to step back and say, am I seeing Jesus? Is Jesus the most important thing in my life? Or are other things? No magic wand. By the grace of God, she's welcomed into this church. But then it's up to you guys to guide that, to show her, to take her up to the tree. Don't leave her there alone, but take her up to the tree so that she can see Jesus. Katie and Dylan, you think you were chosen to be the godparents because you're going to look best in the pictures, right? You know, you are now responsible for her college education, right? (laughs) But again, it's also about the two of you stepping back and saying, how do I see Jesus in my life? Because if I don't see Jesus... I can't share it with this beautiful goddaughter of ours. It's a challenge. It's a challenge for all of us. You know, today, he wants to come to your house. Today, he wants to come to your house and dine with you. Are you ready? Are you willing? Because today, it's not Zacchaeus I'm coming. It's Brian. I'm coming to your house today. You know, Stephen, I'm coming to your house today. Leah, I'm coming to your house today. You always got to remember that. He's constantly saying that to you. And I hope today you jump down out of that tree and you welcome him with joy. Because I can promise you, it can change your life. It can point you in the right direction and give your life more meaning and more purpose Remember what it says in John 10.10, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Welcome him today and see what happens.